Welcome, everybody, on behalf of uh, St. Paul United Methodist Church, and uh, I am so glad that you're here to uh, uh, to hear and to participate in another Lent service, and I am so, is it, uh, full of energy. Too bad that he's going to preach otherwise. <laughs> I really think better now, I'm going to let it go, so. Anyway, uh, the Daniel plan is, is working for me and maybe a few people. It's not for everybody, but I want to report. I, I lost 10 pounds. <laughs> so praise God, praise God. But now, now we, some of you already had uh, supper and uh, we already have fed our bodies, but this is a holistic approach. Now we're gonna feed our spirit and our mind. And so, a uh, very simple uh, service, as you can see in the bulletin. And so, if you want to go, if you look for a, a, a hymn uh, in front of you, and, and go to page seven six six, and we're going to be we're going to do a responsive reading, Psalm thirty two, a confessional reading. Seven six six. No, it's not the name of the beast. It's not the name of the beast. It's, it's, it's. Ready? Blessed are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed are those whom the Lord does not hold guilty, and whose spirit there is no deceit. When I did not declare my sin, my body wasted away through my groanings all day long. For day and night, for the hands of the day long. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, Oh, yes, my transgressions to the Lord, that you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let those who are godly offer prayer to you. At the time of distress, the rush of great waters shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. For me, you preserve me from trouble. Your and, and, and come past me with deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like an unruly horse or mule without understanding, whose temper must be curved with bit and brittle. Many are the things of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice for righteousness. Shout for joy, all you are right in the heart. I want to tell you Psalm 32 is a confessional psalm for uh, King David. When he committed adultery, he went for a while without confessing his sin, but then he wrote this and, and asked him for forgiveness. So this is a beautiful psalm. Uh, let's go to uh, hymn uh, number 393. In your hymnal, and let's do a spirit of the living God. We'll do it twice. If you want to stand up, if you are here,
anyone wants to become a follower, let him deny himself and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Amen. Let's go ahead and share God's peace with each other. Perseverance is what gave them to keep looking for the hope. 
It's not that there was other things that may not have been a common as well, but this is the one big common denominator. This is what can get us through the darkest times. No matter how dark our times are, hope, hope, and perseverance gets us through. Hope is a trust in the promises that God has given us. Hope and faith work hand in hand. We hope that everything that God says is true as so we trust in that and we have faith in that. So as we begin, now we're going to talk about some godly goals. But it's important to realize that not every goal is a godly goal. Not every goal is an important goal. God will bless our godly goals. Now you may think it's pretty obvious that, that godly goals are ones that bring glory to God. And that's the first one. We've got four points. And godly goals, the kind that God blesses, bring glory to God. The goals that God blesses are those that lift up and do things for others that bring this glory and show who God is, who God is to us through the love of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, Whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Can you imagine eating? Can be done for the glory of God. Eating can be done for the glory of God. If you are praying over your meal before you eat, that is done for the glory of God. You are giving thanks. The Bible says anything you can do, everything you can do in life can be done for the glory of God. If you've got the right attitude and the right motivation, the right reason, anything can be done for the glory of God. Making healthy choices and goals in life that bring honor and glory to God. Do it with the right attitude. Do it with an attitude of gratitude towards God and love. Remember, we heard God is love. So when we do it with an attitude of gratitude towards God in love for what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And that is what we talk about in Lent, what God has done for us in Jesus Christ by having him come down in Jesus, God himself, going upon that cross. Did you know that taking out the garbage can be done to the glory of God? You're looking at me funny. Yes. If you're taking out the garbage and you consciously say, I'm going to pray to God and give my troubles or whatever, just have a conversation with God, that is done to the glory of God. You're taking out the garbage to the glory of God because you're having a conversation with Him. So each and every time you take out your garbage, have a conversation with God. Have a conversation. Keep Him in mind at all times. The presence of God in us during that time. What other kind of goals bring glory to God? Any goal that causes you to love Jesus a little bit more. Any goal that causes you to love Jesus just a little bit more. Any goal that causes you to be grateful to God a little bit more. Any goal that causes you to want to serve God. Any goal that causes you to want to be drawn more to Him. Any goal that causes you to want to speak to everybody about what God can do for them brings glory to God. All those things do. Sharing your testimony. Anything that you do that brings glory to God, brings people closer, brings yourself closer, lifts up in love, is to glory in God. And if you make a goal that you want to do that two, three, four times a day, then that's a goal, and we're going to keep doing it. So, yes, here, maybe I should take out the garbage more often than pray. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. And maybe, Lord, I will have to do that. Uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home or in the body or away from it, whether we're here on earth or in heaven. Here on earth or in heaven, we are to please God. Number two, godly goals, the kind of goals that God blesses are motivated by love. Now, this seems rather simple, right? Goals are motivated by love. God is far more interested in why you do what you not do, not what you do. God really isn't interested in about you taking out the garbage. But he's interested in the conversation that you're going to have with him. God is far more interested in why you do it and the actions that you do during that time and the end point in where you're going to get. And if that means you pray more and you talk more to God as you take out the garbage, that is what God's interested in. 
It's not about the garbage. It's about the conversation. God doesn't look for us to make goals in fear or in guilt. God surely doesn't look for us to make goals based upon peer pressure. Now, just because everybody else is doing it, it may be a good goal, okay, doesn't mean that we should do it because we felt pressured into it. It needs to be a goal that makes sense for us to bring us closer, not out of fear, guilt, or peer, peer pressure. Now, you've heard me say, not all of you, but some of you have heard me say, sometimes you have to fake it until you make it. Did you know, did you know though, if you're trying to fake it, if you're faking it until you make it, okay, what's the end goal? Making it. That's a godly goal. If you're faking it till you make it because you want to make it, that is a godly goal. And if so, then God will work with you and bring you honor. Honors as you strive to make it. So if you have to, fake it until you make it. God blesses goals that are motivated by, by love. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 16, 14, everything you do must be done with love. Why? Because that's the number one lesson in life. Remember, God is love. God put you on this earth out of love. That's the number one goal. Now, there's two kinds of love that motivate us to set goals. Our love for the Lord Jesus Christ and our love for people. When you use these two motives to set your goals, such as say, Lord, I want to get my life together physically, mentally, spiritually, because I love you, God, then that is a godly goal. Love the Lord, the Bible says. The life I live in the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus Christ gave himself for each of us on the cross. He loved you when he went on that cross. And he continues to love you today. Just as you are. Not as God would like to see us be, but God loves us through Jesus Christ just as we are. Full of the imperfections that we have, God loves us. And when we realize that much love is coming to us, how can we do anything but respond back? How can we do anything but not to love God back? You feel compelled not by God, but your own being of love towards Jesus Christ. Other motivation of love is for love of other people. The Bible says no one has ever seen God. And here's the key. But if we love one another, if we love one another, God who lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Remember we heard, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God resides in us. And if we are loving one another, even that unlovable person who has the Holy Spirit residing in them, then we are loving God and that is a godly goal to love all. And if you don't love people, then you miss the whole point. Because the whole point is learning how to love. 1 Corinthians 14 1, let love be your highest goal. So godly goals that bring glory to God are motivated by love. Number three, godly goals fulfill one of God's purposes for your life. Pick goals to fulfill the purpose that God has for your life. God's purpose for you is centered around one thing. Centered around preparation for eternity with who? But God the Father. God says that when you're fulfilling my purposes, I'm going to help you. God continually has things done with us, for us, so that we can be with God in heaven. It's all about preparation here and now for later. It's not really about here and now. It's not about today, it's about tomorrow. It's about the other life. The thing about God's purposes is they are eternal, forever. They're not just today. They are forever. And when you start to realize that, oh my gosh, what a difference in the perspective of what we do. Loving the unlovable, loving those who stab us in the back, Loving those who can't pay us back. Just loving God's people. God's children. Set goals that have more of an impact on the second part of your life. Which is in heaven. Not the first part. 
Set goals so that you can grow in character. Grow in character. The Bible says that do not use any part of yourselves to sin or to be used for wicked purposes. Instead, give yourself to God. Surrender your whole being, not part, your whole being to Him to be used for righteous purposes. Remember, and you've heard this a couple different times, Paul says this, I run straight towards the goal with purpose in every step. He doesn't run zigzag. He doesn't run in circles. He runs straight towards the goal. He runs there. He is a purpose-driven runner. He is going to keep running through life, running towards the goal. We run through life, run towards the goal. We want to please Christ the same way that Paul did. We want to follow him. We want to do what God wants us to do. And we need to be not distracted by the things in the world. <coughs> Now, who thinks life is a race? Good. Life is a marathon. Just like marriage, it's a marathon. It's not a race. And the key to a marathon in life is God doesn't care how fast you run it. What God cares about is that you get to the finish line. It's not about how quickly you get there, but that you get to that finish line. Who cares how fast? Who cares how fast? Some of us are a little slower than others. I, I, I don't run so good anymore. I like to run, but I'm not so good of a runner anymore. So it's going to take me a long time to get there. But the race is to the end, and the idea is to get to the finish line, and God will be with us the whole way to pick us up when we fall, to keep us on track, because God wants us to the finish line so that we can be in heaven with him. Godly goals fill, fulfill God's purpose. Godly goals are set in faith. If you want God's blessing on your goal, then you've got to set something that's big enough that requires faith. If you can accomplish a goal in five minutes, it's probably not a godly goal. Probably not. We set too small goals often. And when we set those goals, who can accomplish them? Us. But if we set a goal that is so big that can only be done through the faith of God, and only God, through God's power, can do that, we are exuding our faith, God sees that, and we then have a straight path to go towards, and God's power is the only thing that can accomplish that, that our faith is shown, and we can count on the faith, our faith because we can count on the promises of God and His power to help us accomplish that. So this week, got your pens and pencils out? I want to encourage you to set a health goal for your life. Now, health is far more than physical. It's relational. It's spiritual. It's phys physical. Health is comprehensive. It is so much more. And if, any, if everything you do in life, you can do in your own power, then you don't need God. So set a goal that requires God to get you to that goal. And then you'll be setting a goal that requires you to step out of the boat. Because how are we going to walk on water unless we get out of the boat in the first place? Godly goals are not only godly goals are not only motivated by love, but fulfill His purpose, set in faith. They are achieved with God's power. They are not achieved on our own. But the kind of goal God blesses are so big, so big that He has to step in. He has to step in. God must step in in order to make that goal happen and give you the strength and the energy to accomplish it. Those are godly goals. Goals that can only be achieved from Him. Now, we've probably all seen self-help books, right? There's some good things in there, but those are not godly goals. They're talking about the things that we can do, not about the things that God can do, and only God can do. If we want to set godly goals, we need to hear the Word of God. One of the greatest places to do that, I don't... I don't have one up here. But, Wait. oh, yes, I do. Right here. There's the manual. Right there. This is the best godly goal book there is. 
not a self-help, but a godly help book. We need the help of God to do these things. Has anybody here ever tried to forgive somebody who has really hurt you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, come on. I know there's more hands than that. You know, I thought I thought the Lutherans were bad about raising hands. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it really hurts to try to forgive somebody that's hurt you. And you can say, I just can't do it. And you know what? You're right. You can't do it on your own. You need God's help. You need God's help in order to do that. You need him to give you the power to let it go. Because he forgave you, and he'll give you the power to forgive them. Think about all the things that we need to be forgiven for. Hmm. Oh, think about, think about the Lord's Prayer. Forgive me of my sins or forgive me of my trespasses as I forgive those who have sinned against me. Think about that next time as you say that and say, ooh, maybe I want you just to forgive me the way that you forgive me. No, ask for the godly goal, set the godly goal, and ask God to help you forgive the way that Jesus Christ, through the cross, forgave. Now it says, don't worry. You ever seen that in the Bible? You ever heard Jesus say, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry? Boy, that's just so easy, isn't it? Don't worry. No, yeah, no problem. I, I don't know where my next meal's come. Don't worry about it. Uh, we don't have the power not to worry. But God has the power for us not to worry. God has the power for us to be patient. I made a mistake at one time of praying for patience. And if you have prayed for patience, you know that God gives you things to be patient about. God does not give you patience right off the bat, but gives you things to be patient about. God gives you the power to love the unlovable. God gives you the power to do the right thing, the honest thing, the ethical thing. When everybody else is cheating, God gives you the power to do the right things. And you can only get the power through the Word of God, through prayer, through reading this, and hearing the Word. The Daniel plan is based upon Daniel chapter 1. It's not a diet. It is a lifestyle. It's a total, comprehensive lifestyle. Yes, there's physical fitness, but there's spiritual fitness. There's mental fitness. There's fitness to everything in our life, very holistic. Diets just go up and down, but this is something permanent. There's no nagging on the people who don't want to participate. You got that? No nagging on the people that don't want to participate in the dial in the Daniel plan. People have their own reasons why they do and don't do things. No pressure, no guilt. No nagging. We all were here, we will all hear about health, and some of us are going to participate a little bit further and go a little bit deeper of what God wants for us in our overall health. This time of Lent is about reflection on the past. It's about inspection of what we do today. It's about renewing our commitment to God and Jesus Christ and being transformed into new people by the power of God. You've got to have godly goals achieved by God's power. That is the only way we can achieve this, is through God's power. So let's look at the last three verses. We plan the way that we want to live, but only God makes us able to live it. We can plan it, but only with God's power can we live it. That's why we fail often at our New Year's resolutions if we don't look for God to help us through it. We don't depend upon Him. The Bible says you will not succeed by your own strength or power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The Bible says trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend upon your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do. That means even in your finances, your health, your career, all, not some, not part, all of what you do. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will direct your paths. First, you have to trust the Lord with all your heart. Then you've got to get some spiritual partners. Because the spiritual partners in your life will give you the support that you need. You cannot do this on your own. Let us pray. Gracious, loving Father, 
we thank you for your son. We thank you that you sent him down and we thank you that he forgave us through that cross. We also thank you for our church families. Yes. Our church family is, is growing this Lent. We love you and we love each other. We love each other and we ask that you continue to help us to love each other. We want to give you all of our lives, not just part of it, but all of our lives. Help us to take the time to sit down and to make some faith goals in, in areas of our lives. I pray that this message is not only heard, but it will also be done and done in your Son for your glory. In all this, we lift up to you through your Son who gave the ultimate price through love for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our light into this world. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Doug. That was uh, some great preaching. Thanks a lot. Praise God. But we're going to continue to love God and we're going to continue to worship God as we uh, collect an offering. And, you know, giving is part of worship also at the same time. So what we're going to do is, uh, you got some small envelopes in front of you. And people from, uh, from the uh, First Lutheran, just put them in the envelope. People from St. Paul, just... Just throw it in there. So every envelope that we're going to bring up is going to send a video as well. Or if there's a pencil there, just put first two there.
you go, let's go to the back book, the famous scene, if you know it, number uh, 2152. 2152 from the uh, famous scene.